today we are going to be doing a tune-up on a 1995 Mazda 626 2.0 liter automatic. Same exact tune-up procedures can be used for any Mazda 626 MX-6 Ford Probe from 1993 until 1995. It's a very very short years there that you can use this procedure on because they have a distributor. For 1996 to 2002 US models that have OBD2, you're gonna need an OBD2 scan tool. Step one of a tune-up, watch my throttle position sensor diagnostic video. Whenever you take your car in for a tune-up, they're gonna check the throttle position sensor just to make sure that is in tune and that is in time. They're gonna check your closed throttle position value and your open throttle position value. For all you guys that have OBD2 that have your stupid really easy scan tools that don't have to take 20 minutes to adjust it you can look at a little graph that tells you your TPS value and really easy step number two figure out how to get your car in diagnostic mode I'm not going to go over how to get your car in diagnostic mode that I'm leaving that up to you to figure out how to get your car into diagnostic mode the same time that you would get error codes that spit out on your OBD1 vehicle is the same exact time that you're in diagnostic mode when you want to set your timing don't worry if this thing starts blinking out error codes at you that doesn't matter what we want to be is in diagnostic mode, not for the purpose of this, but for the purpose of timing. I hope that makes sense. Now we got the jumpers hooked up, we're in diagnostic mode. Now we need to get uh, our car back up to operating temperature again in diagnostic mode. That timing mark is way the hell over there. It's not even showing up anywhere close to where it's supposed to be. I am way off. This thing, because it's sitting on the valve cover and it's metal, is going to get really freaking hot real quick. So you want to try and do this quick. Now I have the distributor loosened so I can advance. So basically you got that light, you got the little mark, and you just have to line it up with a timing cover. But I can't do that with you in the way. I, there's just not enough room for both of us to see down in there. I'm sorry. So here's a basic diagram that I drew that shows uh, the timing setup. This part here is on your timing cover. It is molded plastic into the timing cover. Your timing marks are part of your timing cover. And my timing covers were warped. And that's a common problem on the 626. So if your timing covers are warped, this might not provide you with an accurate reading, especially if those bolts holding in your timing cover have shifted to the left or right. I mean, it's gonna completely screw up your marks. So make sure that your timing covers are good. And that's one of the reasons why I did the whole water pump and timing belt was just to put on new timing covers. And if I was gonna put on new timing covers, I might as well do the water pump and timing belt while I did it. So obviously here you have your alternator belt and your power steering belt in this part right here is your crankshaft pulley. In the very middle of that crankshaft pulley between your alternator belt and your power steering belt is going to be your timing mark. That's the little white notch that I painted in the timing belt video. And if you haven't watched the timing belt video, go watch that part two of the timing belt water pump replacement video. The point here is to use your distributor adjustment to get this mark to line up 10 degrees before top dead center. This is top dead center. This is not where you want your timing mark to be. You want it to be 10 degrees before top dead center. Problem that I'm having is that my mark is way the hell over here. No matter how much I adjust that distributor, I cannot get that mark to line up probably more than about right there. Six to eight degrees off. Six to eight degrees off means that my distributor is not correctly stabbed. The bolt is probably gonna be right in the middle there. And you can adjust that to either Either advance or retard the timing. When you adjust that, that is what is going to make this mark move up and down in the middle there. And I hope that helps you in some way uh, to see how this process, this tune-up process takes place. And since I have an issue with my distributor alignment, I actually will get to show you how to do that. I forgot to hit record, but uh, start the car, run the car, pull your fuel pump relay and let the car stall. Second step, turn your steering wheel all the way to the right because we're gonna need access to that crankshaft bolt. And this way, we can get a breaker bar in here without having to raise up the car. Why do it if you don't have to? We have to figure out when we're on top dead center. And we're gonna do that by spinning the crankshaft pulley, looking for signs of compression in here. Now, there are many different ways that you can look for signs of compression on your number one cylinder. Old school funk uses a Schrader valve on a hose attached to a balloon, and when the balloon inflates, that's when you know that you're on the compression stroke. See, another method, you could probably use a compression gauge itself. I'm gonna show you how to stab a distributor. Actually, it's probably a win-win for both of us. 
That's your rotor, and these are your firing contacts. This is the ignition wire for cylinder one. You look on the back of that cap, that's the firing point for cylinder one. So my original mark, which was right about here, I think was way too far forward. I've remarked it up here with a marker, and as you can see, that contact point and that firing point, so what I did was I followed that, and then I made a mark right there, like that. And the difference in that mark is probably about an inch over, so I think that's one tooth off, one tooth too far. So my old mark was over here, so you can see how far off that was. All right, so let's go reinstall this and stabby stabby. I hope that's right. We'll find out. Once it comes time to time the engine, we'll find out. If you're really far out of time, you can get pre-detonation, knocking, pinging, backfires, really piss poor running, ridiculously rough idle, engine shake. Keep in mind, if this doesn't work and you somehow mistimed your engine, didn't stab your distributor correctly, that you're gonna have to go through all of this entire process again. And this is part of a general tune-up procedure. It can be a pain in the ass. If you don't know what you're doing, like myself, this is the first time I've ever tried a full tune-up. So we'll see. Don't forget to put your fuel pump relay back in. Okay, well, I obviously did not get this set correct. I thought that should have been it. That should have been dead on. Apparently it's not. Pointed at that dot, not the big dot, but the small dot beside it. That rotor is pointing way over here, not on my line. And I'm not sure why that is. Make sure that's lined up there just right. Now I'm going to go ahead and put another mark on here. And I'm going to label this one T because I know that one is top dead center. I'm not sure what that's going to be for, but we'll see if it actually needs to be on this tooth or that tooth because this distance represents one tooth. And from here, this is where I originally had it. That was another tooth. So I could have been two teeth off. So we'll figure it out. Little by little, we'll figure it out. Well, I guess we'll go with that. That looks about right. What do you think? Let's try that. say about 20 degrees before top dead center. 20. I'm way off. I need to dial it in somehow. Okay, we're going to try this again, except this time I'm going to put the engine in diagnostic mode. See if that changes the timing any. So I am probably, base time, I am probably about 30 degrees before top dead center. Way too far. So what I need to do is adjust my distributor and sure enough that distributor is way off. Unfortunately, I could not show the entire process. It just took way too long, and I was going back and forth between the air adjust screw, the distributor, and the timing light, and it was like this little dance, and I had to go back in the car and look at the idle speed, and you just can't, there is just no way that I can film that. It's an adjustment procedure. It's, it's, it is a fine tuning, but if you decide to try and do this yourself, I can leave you with some very good tips that will allow you to do this correctly. Number one, make sure that that bolt is halfway on that distributor. If this bolt is too far up or too far down, it is positioned incorrectly. Your distributor should be positioned exactly in the middle. If your distributor adjustment bolt is not directly in in the middle of that slide, that means that your distributor rotor is not pointing on the correct tooth. It means it's either going to be one tooth over on this side or one tooth over on this side, and you have to figure out exactly where it should be. Tip number two. Now, I know all of you 1998 to 2002 owners are saying, but I don't have a distributor, so what do I do? It's actually so much easier for you. You don't have to do any of this crap. The only thing that you have to do when you do your timing is make sure that those two timing marks are lined up on your cam gears. If those two marks are lined up, that's all you have to do. The ECU takes place of the distributor here. It's all electronic in the 1998 to 2002. The ECU compensates. If your mechanical timing is correct, the 1998 to 2002 Mazda 626 ECU takes care of the rest. It uses the coil pack and the crank sensor. So make sure your crank sensor is good. And on my car, the crank sensor is actually built into the distributor. That's why it's so important for the 93 to 95 guys to have the distributor aligned correctly because the crank sensor is inside of that sucker. We don't have a crank sensor behind the pulley. 
we got a crank sensor in there. So for you 98 to 2002 guys, make sure your crank sensor is good. Make sure your cam sensor is good. Your cam sensor will be right here on your valve cover. The same thing for protégés. You have a cam sensor right there as well. Make sure that's good. Now for my base idle speed, as long as you're in diagnostic mode, you can come over to the air adjust screw and you can adjust that screw using a screwdriver. You can take that idle speed up or you can take the idle speed down. If you cannot get your idle speed within a certain proximity, the ECU cannot compensate enough to get your idle speed be correct once you take your car out of diagnostic mode. Once your car is out of diagnostic mode, the ECU will automatically compensate and set your RPMs to the correct level. If it cannot compensate enough, that's when you have idle issues. That could be due to a variety of factors, including vacuum leaks, valve timing, you know, uh, burnt valves, dirty MAF sensor, bad engine coolant temperature sensor. There's a whole wide variety of issues, and you'll have to track those issues down. If it does not set your idle speed at the correct speed, once you exit diagnostic mode, it means you have a problem here somewhere still that you have to figure out. So I, I hope that helps, and I'm sorry I could not record it. I really wanted to. There were so many different changes that I had to make that there's just no way I could film it and I really want I you know obviously I really wanted to be able to film that and show everyone how to do it I guess it's just one of those things that you have to learn for yourself and that's where experience comes in well I got it <laughs> it took me a while uh, with the IAC connected my base idle speed was 1500 put that shorting bar back in it dropped it from 1500 down to about 750-800. So the IAC is doing its job well. The timing uh, was was perfect. For the first time in my life, when I took off in first gear, spun the tires, all because of timing. Also, my fans are working correctly again. So if your timing is messed up at all, your fans might not kick on. They might kick on, but they're gonna kick on late. I know that's kind of odd. It has nothing to do with the coolant temperature sensor. Late fans kicking on have to do with bad timing. Why? I have no idea. You go figure it out. My fans were kicking on at about five minutes afterwards, and everything was really slow, and I was overheating a little bit. Now my fans are kicking on perfect timing, perfect. My car is working again. It's, it's running great. It's running perfect. Just absolutely. Mwah. My initial base idle speed was about 1200, 1250, and I was like, why is my base idle so freaking high? As soon as I put that shorting bar in, sure enough, everything dropped right back down to exactly where it's supposed to be. It takes a little bit to uh, for the ECU to relearn. I did disconnect the battery during the process, reset the ECU. My ECU is relearning how to be normal again. It's doing a fantastic job because the timing is correct. The timing is dead on correct. Mechanical timing, ignition timing, for the first time, I think I have correct timing. I think my rotor was off one tooth the entire time, and that's what was causing a whole bunch of my issues. Everything is just freaking right yeah, well except for the OD blinking on and off but yes okay I'm using the automatic ECU still in my manual transmission all right get over the blinking light just ignore it I need a sticker to put on that thing I can't show the timing I, I there's just no room to get in there with that timing light so that you can see the marks there's just no room I'm sorry and I don't want to risk having my camera fall down on those belts trying to film that and have it get all blah, 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 like a blender no I, I value my camera too much I'm sorry I'm not gonna take that risk yeah it took me a while it probably took me a couple hours to get right I'm not a mechanic but I do have determination and determination won the day this is awesome for my car today is a banner day that is freaking awesome so you know what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna go out driving and enjoy my car I'm gonna be driving around town if you live in the same town as me look out your window you might see me just driving by eight years later I've got my car working again it works great. The whole moral of this story was that distributor being one tooth off had uh, too much advanced timing. The timing was off. Yes, the ECU could compensate for that timing if you full tilt to that distributor, but the point was it's not supposed to run like that. It's not going to run as efficient. So at low idles, the engine shakes. Freaking shakes horribly. I've got my car back. It was just bad timing the entire time. The holy, yes, I still had burnt intake valve that I had to get taken care of, had a little bit of head work done. So basically, my car is fixed, okay? So I can shut down this channel. Done. Story, this story is done. My car is working back 
perfect I can turn this channel off now. I don't care. Uh, obviously, that's not going to happen. I'm still going to make videos. I'm still going to do the things that I've always wanted to do, but I couldn't get to it because I had such mechanical issues. I've been through a lot of mechanics that didn't fix that issue, that didn't spot that issue. No one cares about your car as much as you do. What do I do with my car? Control arms, tie rods. Obviously, I want to get the suspension working a little bit better. I still want to get the manual ECU and all the real actual manual stuff. I want to get that done. Maybe I can do some modifications like, you know, lighting or, or something. Uh, I don't know, you know? I don't have to worry about the mechanical. And I've been saying that for 10 damn years. Once I get the mechanical right, then the other stuff comes. Zepticon, FIS, ND28. That means I'm, I'm done with this shit. I'm ready to move on. And I'm going to start saving up a little bit of money, and we're going to get that done. We're going to get those out there. That's definitely on the horizon now. Possible. Really super excited. I feel like a weight has just been lifted off my shoulder. I'm ready. Let's, let's go. Let's do something. I'm happy for once. If you have any suggestions on videos that you might want to see me do in the future, no, I'm not doing a turbo. Don't even start. Don't even, don't. No turbos. Things that make sense for me to do with my car. I feel different. I feel better. I feel good. So instead of me talking, obviously, about how freaking happy I am, let's, you and I, let's go for a drive. Tomorrow, because it's raining right now, we'll just go for a drive. No, I haven't had any Red Bull. <laughs>